Hey YouTube, welcome to my final episode on algebraic methods. Today we're going to look at proofs, all the three that you need to know for year 12 at least. So let's get right into it. So the first one that I'm going to look at is exhaustion. Now exhaustion is a method of proof that literally shows something is true for all cases. Now it's quite limited in its usage because we cannot use it to prove something is true for all numbers because we know numbers are infinite. If I said I wanted to prove something for all the natural numbers, there's an infinite number of natural numbers and we're not going to sit there, well you would sit there forever if you wanted to prove it for every single number and then you wouldn't even end up proving it. So it's quite limited uh, with that respect. So just here's an example of what you could use it for. So prove that every number between 4 and 10 can be written as the sum of two prime numbers. Now a quick note, it is conjectured but not proved that every even number can be written as the sum of two primes. This is known as Goldbach's conjecture. So if you look below, there's Goldbach, super cool guy, you know, just came up with some, some rule and then just disappeared. Yeah, a bit like Fermat. <laughs> um, so what is a conjecture? Now a conjecture is a conclusion or a proposition which is suspected to be true due to preliminary supporting evidence but for which no proof or disproof has yet been found. Although Fermat's last theorem has been proved now, but he ended up saying something and then also disappeared. Um, but this one has not been proved yet. So maybe you, one of you guys will end up proving it one day and earn a lot of money um, for that. So let me just show you by exhaustion how it would work here. So prove that every number between four and 10, every even number between four and 10 can be written as the sum of two primes. Well, four can be written as two plus two, six can be written as three plus three, eight can be written as three plus five, and ten, five plus five. Now you guys yourself could go ahead and, I don't know, try with all the numbers up to 20. So by exhaustion, I've shown that all the even numbers between four and 10 can be written as the sum of two primes. Another one that you need to know about is known as counterexamples. Now, this isn't really a way of proving something. It's just a technique we use to disprove a proposed conjecture. Because generally in maths, if someone comes up with a conjecture and you can find one example where it's not true, you've just disproved the whole thing. So let's just do an example. Use a counterexample to disprove the following statement. Let n be an element of the natural numbers. Now remember, what are the natural numbers? The natural numbers are the counting numbers not including zero, so one, two, three, four, etc. So let n be an element of the natural numbers and suppose that n is prime, then two to the power of n minus one is also prime. So I'm gonna list the prime numbers. So we have two, I'm just gonna list a few and I'm gonna show you a cool way on the calculator to show whether something is a prime or not. So let's have a look at the the calculator. We have 2 squared minus 1, which is 3. So what you could do in your calculator, can you see there's this fact here? If you do shift and then the fact button, if it doesn't change, it means it is a prime number. Because what it does is it rewrites the number as a product of its primes. So this is 3 and this is prime. All right, what about if we change it to cubed, what happens? Seven, look, shift, fact, it doesn't change, yeah? So that also is a prime, I'm just gonna say P. All right, what about power five? 31, shift, fact, okay, doesn't change. And I'm gonna keep going, shift, fact, ah, 2 to the power of 11 changes. So this is not prime. What was it? Do shift fact again. So 2047, 2047, which is, what was it again? 23 times 89, 23 times 89. So this is, we're gonna say not prime. So we didn't even have to do n to the power of 13. So we have shown, Statement is not true for n equals 11. 
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now the next type of proof here is deduction. Now this is the technique that we're familiar with with GCSE. I'm going to show you two examples. One slightly easier one and one really tricky one. So um, the product of two consecutive positive integers is added to the larger of the two integers, prove that the result is always a square number. So deduction is about letting a number be n, or if it's an even number, 2n, an odd number, 2n plus 1, etc. So we have consecutive integers, so we can have n and n plus 1. The product, so if we multiply them together and then add the, add the number to the larger of the two, which is n plus 1, the result is always a square number. So we need to prove that this is always a square number. Now there's different ways you can do this, guys. You can expand it all, solve the quadratic, well not solve the quadratic, but factorize the quadratic. I'm gonna do something else. I notice that there's n plus one in both terms, here and here. So I'm gonna factorize out n plus one. What would be left? Well, in the first term, if I take out an n plus one, I'd be left with n. Plus, if I factorize out n plus one, from n plus 1, I'm left with 1. Ah, so we have n plus 1 times n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared. And then that is then proved. Okay, here's an interesting question. Here are the first five terms of a linear sequence. So remember from GCSE, linear sequence just means a sequence whose terms go up by the same amount. 7, 13, 19, 25, and 31. Prove that the difference between the squares of any two terms of the sequence is always a multiple of 24. All right, so step one is we need to write down the formula for this linear sequence, yeah, because we're using deduction to do this. So what is the nth term here? Well, what's it going up? It's going up in sixes, so it'll be 6n plus, then we could find the first term by subtracting six, which would be plus one. Now it's saying prove that the difference between the squares of any two terms, yeah? So what do we mean by any two terms? We can't, well, what a lot of students do is they'll do 6n plus one, and then they would add six to that and say that's the other term. But you can't add six because that's the next term. We want any two terms. So the way we deal with any two terms is we write down the exact same sequence, but we change the letter. So it'll be 6m plus one. So if n and m are the same, then the exact same term. If n and m, or if m is one bigger than n, then it would be the next term in the sequence. Or if n and m are just completely random numbers, then they are any just any two terms in the sequence. So this is being very thorough, is saying we're going to prove whether they're the same, whether they're consecutive, or just any random terms in the sequence, then the difference between the squares is always a multiple of 24. Right, so let's take the difference between the squares of the random two terms in the sequence. Now, you can go ahead and expand everything and simplify. But what I notice here is that we have two square numbers that are being taken away, which reminds me of difference of two squares. So, for example, x squared minus 1, when you factorize, is x plus 1, x minus 1. Here, what is it going to be? It's going to be the first term, 6n plus 1, plus the second term, times the first term, minus the second term. Yeah, so x squared minus y squared would be x plus y, x minus y. I'm just applying that same principle. So what does this simplify to? We have 6n plus 6m, 1 plus 1 is 2. And here we would have 6n minus 6m, then we'd have 1 minus 1. Uh, so it just simplifies to that. In the first bracket, we could factorize out a 2. And from the second bracket, we could factorize out a 6. So in the first bracket, we would be left with 3n plus 3m plus 1. And in the second bracket, we would just have n minus m. 
Well, that just leaves us with 12 lots of 3n plus 3m plus 1 times n minus m. So what we've just shown is that the difference between the squares is always a multiple of 12. Well, that's not good enough. We need to show 24, which means we need to prove that no matter what n and m are, at least one of those brackets has to be even. Because if it's even, it's a multiple of 2. And then a multiple of 2 times 12 will then give you a multiple of 24. So we need to show for, so there's a, math, a mathematical symbol for all, an upside down A, for all n, m, one of the brackets must be even. Now, the only way to do that is to consider the different cases for n and m. What happens if n is even and m is even, or n is even and m is odd, or both of them are odd? So we need to consider the different cases. So let's do the first one. Let's do n and m are even. Now, if n and m are even, then when we subtract n and m, like this one, n minus m, then n minus m is even as well and therefore multiple of 2. That's good, yeah? So we've shown that if n and m are even, then we have one bracket that is a multiple of 2. So we could say let n minus m equal 2k or something and our brackets would look like 12, 3n plus 3m plus 1 times 2k, which would be 24k 3n plus 3m plus 1, which is shown. All right, what about number 2? What about if both of them were odd? Well, if we take two odd numbers and we subtract them, what are we left with? Now, obviously, you can give examples, but realistically speaking, all odd numbers are in the form of something like 2n plus 1. Yeah, so they always have a plus odd number at the end. It always starts as an even plus odd. And that odd, we can write it always as a plus one at the end. Meaning when we subtract them, the plus ones always cancel. So it leaves us with an even number. So same thing then, n minus m is even. And then I'm just going to say quoting is the same thing as part one. So I'm not going to write that again. The final one we need to consider is if n is even m odd, we could say vice versa. Okay, what happens when one of them is even and one of them is odd? Now for sure, if you take an even number and you subtract an odd number, that is always going to leave you with an odd number because you're always going to have that plus one at the end. So clearly it's to do with that 3n plus 3m plus 1. So let's have a look. 3n plus 3m plus 1. I'm going to factorize out the 3 here. See what happens. 3 lots of n plus m plus 1. Well, n plus m is definitely odd. Yeah? So n plus m is odd. Yeah? So we then need to consider what happens when you do an odd number times 3. And 3 is an odd number. Yeah? So 3 times an odd is an odd times an odd which is always an odd number, yeah? Odd numbers times odd numbers are always odd numbers. And we don't need to show that explicitly, but one way you could show that is we could say, let n plus m equal 2k plus 1. And we would have three lots of 2k plus 1, plus 1. When we expand that, we get 6k plus 3 plus 1, which is 6k plus 4, and we can then factorize out a 2. 2 lots of 3k plus 2, which is even. When we sub that back in, we get 12 lots of, so remember the bracket was 3n plus 3m plus 1, we can replace that with what we had before, 2 lots of 3k plus 2, times that n minus m, which leaves us with 24 lots of 3k plus 2 times n minus m, which is proved. So now we can just write a little concluding statement. So we could say 
for all n m we have shown that one of the brackets has to be even leading to a factor of 24 in our expression and we can say proved you could say qed you could color in a box it's up to you or you could tick it and say proved but that's it guys this is proofs i've shown you probably the the hardest type of proof they they can ask you generally speaking in the a levels because in year 13 we do proof by contradiction which in a way is regarded as harder but definitely in terms of as concepts this is the hardest proof you can get so this concludes algebraic methods so guys if you learned anything today please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed for more maths content we're going to move on to the binomial expansion next so i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video peace